Welcome back everybody. As you guessed from the intro, this is what we're going over today, this little pistol here. It is the Beretta APX Carry. So as the name would imply, uh, it's designed for concealed carry. We've been shooting it out here today. And the reason we're doing a range review is because unfortunately this is not my gun. Beretta sent it out to me to actually get the video done. So that way when they announce it, because as of right now when I'm filming this, it's not announced, but when they announce it, that way there's some information out there on the pistol. So it comes with two mags. We have our eight round mag here, and it also comes with a six round mag. We're gonna see here in just a second has a lot of the same features that you're used to with the APX. We'll get into those here in just a second as well. But I know a lot of people are gonna say, how's it compared to the Glock 43, right? That's kind of, uh, this gun is competing in that wheelhouse. So we're gonna load up uh, this gun and the Glock 43 and kind of do a back-to-back -back comparison, at least from my perception anyway. Through the magic of editing, the mags are loaded up here for our Glock 43. This is one of my personal carry guns. We have it loaded up with 124 grain Federal HST. This is sort of my default go-to self-defense round. And uh, we're gonna see how it shoots. Obviously I know how this one shoots, but we're gonna see how it compares rather to the APX carry here. And uh, we've got a target downrange. It's a shootsteel.com target right over there. It's about 13, 14 yards away. I'm gonna try to shoot it as fast as I can kind of hope to keep it on target, it's a 10 inch plate, so we'll see. Not bad. Uh, the Glock 43 is a great pistol. I think everyone kind of accepts that at this point. So we will grab the APX carry I have here just off camera. And once again, we have it loaded up with six rounds of Federal HST 124 grain. And one thing I should mention while we're talking about the mags is that it comes with, again, the eight rounder that you guys just saw. And then it comes with a six rounder that has a flush base plate. So that's what I'm using here. Um, it's exactly the same one I used. I used the flush base plate on the 43 as well. However, they also give it, or rather include, a base plate with a pinky extension. So if you want to get your pinky on there, you can do so. Uh, for me, with this magazine, I kind of can't, so you guys can see there. I have relatively large hands, as folks who watch the channel know. And I kind of, I'm a little bit under it there. So same thing, same target, same distance. We'll try to keep it on target and uh, see how it does. So I can tell you, uh, recoil impulse is almost identical, if not identical. One thing this uh, gun does though, better than the Glock 43, without question, in my opinion, is the front stippling. So the front stippling there, as that gun is flipping in your hand in a recoil, really does stick to you. It's very aggressive in the front, as is it here on the rear. However, on the sides, it's about the same texture in terms of uh, aggressiveness as the Glock 43 itself on the sides, but it's much more aggressive on the front and the rear, and that does really help you uh, kind of be able to dig in and get some leverage on that pistol to mitigate that recoil. I didn't intend to make this a comparison video, but I figured since I already started, you guys are gonna ask me about it. So uh, there they are size-wise in terms of length. The 43, if we line the rear of the slide up there, is a little bit longer. It's approximately three eighths of an inch longer there. You guys can probably see that as well there on the slide. And if you take a look there at the length in terms of the grip, you'll see the Beretta is a touch longer, maybe an eighth of an inch there um, as they are lined up. And the widths, I'm not sure on it. It looks pretty darn close. I will roll it in though, because I don't have that measurement with me handy and I'll also roll in the weights of each of these unloaded or probably roll in photos of them so you guys can see for yourself that nobody's making it up. But we'll load some more mags and do some more shooting. Outside of those HST rounds that you guys just saw us fire, the only thing we've put through it so far has been 124 grain Minuteman Munitions stuff. They are an ammo sponsor. Thank you to Minuteman Munitions. Check them out if you guys are looking for good ammo. Um, good practice ammo, I should say. Now in the gun, we have some Federal aluminum cased ammo because we're gonna try to see how it feeds with a few different loads here. So let's put some rounds down range. The slide is locked back every time. And if you guys were counting, that was nine rounds. We are, uh, rather we have tested it several times with uh, one in the chamber plus a full mag. Some guns don't like that. This one so far is not complained at all. It does have a slide release slide lock lever here on the left side of the pistol. It is not present on the right. So you left user just either gonna have to come over the top or use your index finger. The mag release is uh, reversible. It's not ambidextrous. I do prefer that. I've said that in many, many videos. And the reason for that is if you're, you know, gripping the, the pistol relatively tight, your hand, if you're right-handed, obviously the exact same thing is gonna be 
reversed if you're left-handed, but your knuckles and your hand as you're gripping here can actually release the magazine. I've, it's happened to me countless numbers of times with guns that have A and B mag releases, so I much prefer having that reversible mag release simply because it avoids that issue and still lets the lefties out there have their mag release where they want it. So uh, that's a good thing there. Going strong. We switched up the loads again. This time it's gonna be some Winchester Super Clean. What this is, is lead-free ammo. So it's really lightweight for caliber. I think it's, yeah, 90 grain. So this is gonna be coming out of this little uh, pistol smoking for sure. But for those of you guys uh, stuck in places where you can't shoot ammo that has lead in it, uh, that's a load I would imagine most folks would wanna train with. So we're gonna give it a whirl here, see how she runs in this pistol. Can't complain. One thing I wanna talk about actually before we reload here is gonna be the trigger. So uh, I have the full size APX and then I have the 15 round version. I think it's the compact. They make a 12 round version, sort of like the Glock 17, 19, and 26. Um, so those pistols both have better triggers than this one. And I don't know why that is. Um, so let's talk about the trigger. It's not that it's bad. It's just not quite as crisp as the other ones. So the trigger on this, as you guys can see, has our little trigger safety there. So you have to actually actuate that for the trigger to go back like so. But like I said, it's not quite as crisp uh, as the other triggers are. So you have your take up. Almost immediately we have pressure, uh, sort of like a double action trigger where you can kind of feel a spring engaging. And that's happening all the way to the rear and it breaks all the way at the rear as well. So we'll walk up to the camera here so you guys can see it a little bit better. So right here, we got that spring pressure happening and you feel it the whole way through. And then back there at the rear, very rear is where it breaks. It breaks right at six and a half pounds on my scale. And that's the reset right there. So it's a pretty long reset as well. It's not that it's a bad trigger, it's just the other two, again, the other larger size APXs are definitely better in my opinion, they're much more crisp. Um, and one thing you'll notice too is that we still have this little indicator on top there as you press the trigger, it goes up as the uh, safety is moving out of the way to allow the striker forward. So that's what's actually happening there for those who are wondering what the heck's going on on the top of the slide. Speaking of the slide, something they did better than the uh, bigger brother APXs. So when you look at the APX pistols, it looks like with these uh, serrations there that are built into the design of the slide, it looks like they'd be super aggressive. Um, but one thing I found is that when you're actually using them on the larger ones, and right now it's about 80 degrees out here, my hands are a little bit sweaty for sure. And uh, when you're using them on the larger ones, your hands will slip off them. However, not on this one. They went in and actually changed the way the serrations are. It looks the same but I can tell you for sure it is much more aggressive and it sticks to your hand as it should. So in that regard, it's much, much better in my opinion. If you have double feeds, if you're just doing reloads, whatever the case may be, and you need to work that slide, they have very, very aggressive texture on there. It's what I think most folks thought it would have been with the larger size ones, but they weren't. So definitely kudos to them for that. And the slide does have a melanite finish on there. So it's a nice carburization and uh, it's gonna give you good surface hardness, good corrosion resistance, uh, good wear properties, all of that sorts of things. And even if it starts to wear, uh, the nitrocarburization goes beneath the actual black that you see there. So it's gonna protect it, um, even if it's starting to wear off visually. So again, same ammo as the Winchester clean stuff. And uh, we'll see how she runs. Missed one there, totally my fault. <laughs> Speaking of miss, the sights that it comes with are all steel. Very good in my opinion. Again, that's something I bash Glock on and I will continue to do so until they change it or I die, uh, whichever happens first. So on the rear here, we have good serrations there on the backside of it to prevent glare. I've never had glare on sights uh, and I shoot out in bright sunlight all the time, but I suppose it certainly can't hurt. We have a square notch in there. A lot of people like that. I tend to like it myself as well. And then we have a front ledge on there for one-handed manipulations uh, should you need to do so. And again, all steel very solid sights there. And then we have a single white dot up front. Nothing fancy going on, but it certainly is a very clean, simple sight picture. And uh, I don't have any complaints about it.
I'm just gonna run a couple more mags through it right now. We got the Minuteman munitions back in there. And then after that, we're gonna show you guys the takedown process, which is pretty simple, uh, but there's one little quirk to it that you'll see here shortly. Mags do drop free every time, which is nice. Obviously, if you guys have bigger hands, that might not always be the case. Did I not bring the extra mag? I did not bring the extra mag. Gun review fail. Anyway, let's go check it out and see how it disassembles. So the first step in taking the pistol down, of course, is going to be to ensure that our pistol is clear. Pistol is clear. Step one, complete. At this point, we're gonna send our slide home. And you have two options. Number one, you can either pull the trigger here in just a second, or for those who don't like to do that, you can hit this release button here. And this button right here is what actually releases the striker tension. So it's the same thing uh, functionally as actually pulling the trigger. At this point, you're just gonna take this uh, little slot here. You can use a round, spent round, live round, whatever. Rotate it 25, or rather a quarter turn, not not a 25%, a quarter turn. And then at this point, your slide comes right off. So a couple of things you'll probably notice here is that just like it's bigger brothers, the actual serial number on this gun is the steel frame chassis insert. So you can remove it if you wanna switch out the color of your grips, etc. different sizes, should Beretta come out with those. Uh, it's simple to do. I have a video on my YouTube channel on how to do it. So you guys can see what the internals look like there, but it's pretty slim. And when you're disassembling it, all you're doing is rotating that little lever right there to relieve uh, its lock up here on the barrel. Well, you'll see that our recoil spring and guide rod are steel. And then our barrel is a cool timber forge barrel there from Beretta. It has nice wide feed lips to feed those hollow points in there. And of course it is nitrided as well. Looking on the inside of the pistol, you'll see we got some wear in there, but we've been shooting it a bunch here today. So uh, otherwise looks pretty clean, pretty simple. Reassembly of course is the exact same thing in the opposite order. Uh, I will tell you, I messed this up once already, so I might do it again. Um, but what you wanna do is of course, actually seat your guide rod, right? That's kind of important. And then at this point, we're gonna just lock it to the rear. And you wanna make sure that thing goes home. So one time it didn't, right there, it just went home. If it doesn't, turn it back that quarter turn to where it was, so that way your slide won't just go flying next time you pull the trigger. So that is the disassembly and reassembly of the pistol. Hopefully I reassembled it correctly. We're about to find out if the slide goes flying off. I will not edit it out. You have my word on that. Uh, so we're gonna run another mag through it here and then kind of give you guys my, my closing thoughts on it. All right, so my thoughts. What do I think of it overall? Number one, I have to uh, preface that with saying I do not know the price. However, APX pistols are very uh, reasonably priced, uh, all of the other models. So I expect this to come in at a price point lower than the Glock 43. Um, but what exactly it is, I don't know, because as I'm making this video again, the pistol is now not out available for purchase. Things I like. I like the aggressive slide serrations. That's much improved in my opinion. I like the bore axis of the gun. For a small gun, that makes a huge difference. So, uh, you know, in your larger guns, you can kind of get away with a higher bore axis and not pay too much of a penalty in terms of uh, being slowed down under recoil. Uh, but the gun's got a good bore axis. I checked it versus my 43 and it feels pretty much exactly the same. It's got a nice beaver tail there on the back too, speaking of that, um, which for guys like me with bigger hands, uh, sometimes we can get slide bite. Uh, no slide bite at all with this pistol. Uh, good fit and finish overall, can't be mad about that. Um, the melanite process is excellent. It's proven itself at this point in the firearms industry. Really like the aggressive front and rear uh, texture on the grip. Trigger, do not like. Uh, it's not terrible, it would not be a deal breaker for me. I'm still able to pretty easily get hits. Um, we've been shooting it today anywhere from 12 to 50 yards and have had no issues hitting it at 50 yards with just practice ammo. So seems to be a very reliable barrel. It has a nice crown on the barrel too as well, which is nice. Sometimes you don't see that in smaller guns. And at this point, again, the APX is a pretty proven gun. Uh, not this one, I shouldn't say that, but this system of guns uh, with the Breda APX, they've done really well. Everything I've uh, seen read online says they're very reliable. This one so far is read at about 250 rounds as of the end of this video right now. 
zero malfunctions. You guys saw it ran the hollow points. It ran several different types of ammunition just fine. Um, holster availability, I can tell you uh, it does not fit in Glock 43 holsters. And the reason for that is that something I haven't covered yet and probably should have, is that it has a very large trigger guard here. So uh, those of you guys who live in cold climates uh, who might be using gloves, so wearing gloves rather a lot, if you have to draw from concealment, you wanna be able to make sure your glove finger can get in there and it's nice and large, it's squared off. I know there's a lot of folks that also like to kind of wrap their finger around the front, if that's you cool uh, but you can do so because of that squared off front edge um, so it does not fit in Glock 43 holsters as I said I'm supposed to be getting a holster sent out to me uh, we shall see if I do I will roll it in here so you guys can see it uh, from Beretta but it does fit in a lot of like the um, like the sticky gear holsters or the DeSantis holsters which a lot of folks use when they pocket carry um, so that's a good thing uh, I have a sticky holster and it fits fine in there. I have a DeSantis that fits fine in there. Uh, we'll throw links down below if you guys are looking to pick one up. All in all, I like it, assuming the price is good, and I'm, I'm guessing it will be. Um, I have no issues with it at all. I would definitely carry it. However, this particular pistol is not mine and uh, it has to go back to Beretta, but I'll be picking one up. So uh, hopefully you guys will see a follow up on this uh, down the road. If nothing else, it'll be on my B channel or Facebook, but I will definitely uh, pick one of these up. I like it. I like the APXs. I've been a fan of them uh, since the beginning. So this one here is no different. For a small gun, it's pretty easy to shoot well. Somebody's probably gonna come out with an aftermarket trigger for it, we shall see. But uh, a lot of folks also like that modularity, being able to kind of move their grips around, change it around and make it fit what they like. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the pistol, anything like that, feel free to post down below in the comments section as always. But if you actually need an answer to that question, the best place to get in touch with me is over at my Facebook page. Over there, if you guys shoot me a message, I get back to all my messages, all of them that I see. So I say that I see because sometimes if a message has a bunch of F-bombs and all kinds of other profanity in there, Facebook will filter it out. But other than that, polite, respectful messages. I respond to all of them over there. Um, so that's the best place to reach me should you need me. I also post deals over there. So if you guys are looking for good deals on ammo mags, APX carries, et cetera, um, that is where you guys will find them. I also send out a weekly email. If you guys aren't uh, signed up for it, you can sign up over at mrgunsandgear.com or at my Facebook page under the sign up tab. Uh, I send an email out, like I said, every week. It's got good deals. Uh, in all the week's videos, I generally put out three videos minimum every week. Um, so if you guys aren't seeing them in your YouTube feed, you'll see them there in your inbox as well. And I think that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much my rant right there. I'm done ranting and uh, we will end the video there. Thanks to Beretta for sending the pistol out to get you guys some content on it when it's released. And uh, thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. Without you guys, uh, none of this would be possible. That's not lost on me at all. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.